Okay, this one is about system pressure, and uh, I can't put any theme music to this, but if you want to sing along to the uh, David Bowie and Freddie Mercury under pressure, be my guest. All right, so what we're going to have a look at is the uh, pressure in the system and the humble radiator cap, which is very much overlooked. So, pressure is required in a cooling system of a vehicle. When an engine cooling system is pump assisted, meaning it has a water pump, and the engine is driven, hard pockets of steam may develop in the cooling system, especially around the cylinder head water jackets, and that's where the heat is the greatest. What also happens is it develops steam, which is a very poor conductor of heat, thus uh, local overheating will occur. Overheating leads to pre-ignition, uh, especially in petrol engines, and loss of power. So by pressurising the cooling system, overheating problems are overcome. What also happens, the cooling system operates under pressure and it prevents the cooling from boiling and forming steam. The engine will be able to operate at higher and more efficient temperatures than a non-pressurised system. So what happens, the pressure cap regulates the pressure in the system and when the engine is hot it is set at a pressure which uh, will release to ensure that the pressure never raises higher than it's designed for, usually about 15 psi. Here we have that wonderful pressure cap from older vehicles. You'll still see these around, even though it's an old-fashioned type. The pressure here is 15 psi. Looking at the pressure cap, we have the spring, which is overcome when the pressure is great enough in the system. This is what lets it off, and you have a rubber seal here. This is the second valve, which allows for contraction. So, as the system cools down, it allows air back into the system and it stops the hoses from collapsing. Pressure cap tester for this type of tester is one of these from Sykes Pickavent. Pressure caps love testers and you can see this is just itching to jump onto the tester and be tested. All right, This is a pump up type and it should blow off at the correct pressure. Just something that's not to be overlooked because the pressure cap needs to work and they do get worn. So if you don't use a tester, then replace it if you think you're in doubt with this one. Using a pressure tester to test a cooling system will show any elusive leaks in the system that appear when the cooling system is hot and pressurized. This is especially true when you're losing coolant and you can't see any drips when the engine's cold and standing. Now, on this vehicle, it's running and it's dripping fluid. You see that wet patch here. All right, you can see it drip just down there. What it turned out to be, this leak, was the gasket that had already gone. On the 300 TDI, you would call it a P gasket, and uh, on the older 200 TDIs, the earlier diesels, this one is just a water gallery um, gasket, which is between the timing case and the cylinder block. This is a pain in the backside to do and they do leak and they do go, so it's something to be aware of if you're actually losing coolant. Right, so basically loss of pressure in the system can be put down to either a faulty pressure cap, not working properly, and you might not know this, or a leak in the cooling system and actually losing fluid. So if we're gonna be looking for leaks, then they could be leaking from the radiator core, uh, corroded or ill-fitting core plugs, chafed cooling hoses that are worn through, ill-fitting hose joints, uh, leaking heater matrix, or even a leaking water pump. Most of these are visual and you'll be able to see them. As I've already shown in the TDI while well, the diesel engines, the water gallery gasket to timing case cover could also be at fault. Overpressurizing of the system when you've got too much pressure in that system, this would indicate either a failed head gasket or even a cracked cylinder head. Usually what happens is as the temperature increases, the gas will increase in the cooling system. Um, filling it with gas and forcing the coolant out of the expansion tank. Sometimes the uh, leak will only be slight from the head gasket and what we'd use is a tester to see if there's any carbon dioxide in the cooling system itself. Okay, checking for pressure in the system, you'll find that the top hose will be hard, but it will also be very hot because we're talking at temperatures of 80, 85, 90 degrees centigrade, so it's not a wise thing to do by hand whereas there is a pressure tester available which you can pump up your system and check for leaks. Systems pumped up to 15 psi which is recommended for the system or just below it and then checking for pressure or pressure loss. 
I'd leave it for maybe five to ten minutes to see if the pressure drops. If the pressure does actually drop within that time, then we know we have a leakage somewhere in the system. This can be rectified and then rechecked. Another good way to do this is actually fill some of the uh, system up with water, then pressure test it. So if you do have to strip it, then you're not losing out and you're not going to be losing antifreeze or fresh antifreeze. So fitting this radiator, this also comes with a Kenlo fan. Now if anybody's fitted one of these and you have the temperature control and the sensor, it fits in here. Knowing that this can leak, what we tend to do first of all is actually put the water in the system, just to bulk it out a bit, and then pressure test it, check the system, make sure it's not leaking anywhere, and then afterwards put the antifreeze in. Generally we're looking at a 50-50 mix and there's about 5 litres of blue coal that's being poured in here at the moment. Once the engine's running it will mix the water and antifreeze together. If you're interested in getting a system pressure tester, for instance this is a Sealy one with a pump. You also have the valve here which will release the pressure once you've finished with it. And then of course you have adapters expanding bungs which expand by turning these upwards. These are actually quite good for also air systems like an intercooler, you can check them, or even a radiator, all right? The, uh, the idea is to fit the bung on. And on the outlet, for instance, that can be bunged up with something. You could put this in the bath, pump it up, and watch out for bubbles to see if there's any leaks. Okay, well, I hope that's helped you a little bit to understand about the cooling system and uh, why we need pressure. We're just here to help you keep your Land Rover running smoothly.